They're here. So yeah, I mean, at first, I just didn't know what to do. At first, Daddy was confused. I didn't know it was going to affect people in Nassau and Freeport. And then I told him, it was just the first three numbers. Our new phone numbers have arrived, but there is no need to be afraid. Only the first three numbers have changed. The new numbers are in effect now. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned into MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, yet another major drug seizure on the family islands. A business community leader says new taxes may keep unemployment numbers up. The prime minister and opposition deputy leader fire blows at each other in the house. Plus, the attorneys representing convicted cop killers storm out of the courtroom. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney and MB12 starts right now. Drug Enforcement Unit officers seized more than $2 million worth of marijuana on Eleuthera this morning, but not before a high-speed boat chase ensued over miles of open water. A joint effort by the DEU, OPBAT, Eleuthera and Exuma Police led to the major discovery at around 3.30 this morning just along the shoreline of Gregorytown, Eleuthera. DEU Commander Superintendent Samuel Butler said police found 45 bales of marijuana weighing approximately 2,000 pounds, but the search didn't end there. We continued the investigation and was able to follow a go-fast boat uh, into the current island area uh, where we were able to intercept the boat with uh, four suspects on it uh, and also containing a number of marijuana packages. Uh, we are early in our investigation, uh, but we would know that we have approximately uh, 2,000 plus pounds uh, with a street value of over $2 million that we are looking into. Butler said the four men were arrested after their 32-foot Midnight Express ran out of gas. Police found dozens of bales of marijuana aboard that speedboat, which was powered by two 300-power engines. He said another seven people are also in custody in connection with this latest find. We have four suspects that actually was interdicted on the boat. One is believed to be a Jamaican national, three Bahamians, but we also have uh, several other uh, suspects in custody in Eleuthera who will travel to New Providence later this afternoon. Butler said the suspects had not yet been interviewed and he could not say if they had criminal pasts or are a part of a wider drug ring. He said based on intelligence, the drugs originated from Jamaica. A stopover was determined for Eleuthera, uh, and we know that a portion would have come into New Providence, and we know based on the network of the, the traffickers and the intelligence given, there would have been move further into the north United States of America. The arrests came on the heels of several recent major drug seizures. Less than a month ago, police arrested four Bahamian men in Exuma in connection with the seizure of $2.3 million worth of marijuana. Just weeks before that seizure, officers found 76 large packages of marijuana on Rick Key. Two men were arrested at the scene. The drugs weighed almost 1,700 pounds. On September 16th, police found over 20,000 marijuana plants in a large field off Carmichael Road in New Providence. The plants were valued at $500,000, as most of the plants were not fully formed. Well, the Progressive Liberal Party's pesky campaign promise of 10,000 new jobs within its first year in office came back to haunt the party yesterday when new jobs figures were released. This is the highest the unemployment rate has been in at least a decade. A former president of the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce suggested today that fewer businesses are hiring due to new taxes and uncertainty surrounding value-added tax, as well as a popular campaign slogan, which he believes is scaring off potential foreign investors. Bonnie Toot reports. 
The Progressive Liberal Party's Believe in Bahamians campaign slogan resonated with thousands of voters. However, prominent businessman Dionisio de Aguilar says he wouldn't be surprised if it scared off a few foreign investors, thus presenting less job opportunities for Bahamians. It's one of four reasons he believes the unemployment rate jumped from 14 percent to 16.2 percent. The whole negativity that has been in the press recently about foreigners. You know, how this whole put Bahamians first policy. I think what it has done is it's scared off a lot of people to come to the Bahamas to invest. I don't think it's been a successful policy. I think it's really scared off a lot of people to make the Bahamas a place where they want to do business because we have a regime that has given the impression that we're not friendly to foreigners. The unemployment rate on New Providence rose from 13.1 percent to 15.9 percent, while the rate on Grand Bahama jumped to 19.5 percent from 18 percent. The Department of Statistics attributed that to a 33 percent decline in discouraged workers. As a result of increased prospective business projects, officials say more people are optimistic about finding jobs and consequently rejoined the labor force. However, De Aguilar insisted today that most businesses are less inclined to hire new people because of new taxes introduced on July 1st and the uncertainty surrounding value-added tax. Uh, first of all, the government introduced a new budget. And when they introduced that new budget, they increased the taxes. When they increased the taxes, um, it sucked more money out of the economy, made people less interested in starting a new business, uh, made people less interested in expanding their businesses. And as a result, I think you, you've slowly seen a ramp down in investment, and many businesses have seen a, a decrease in demand. Number two, there were a lot of infrastructure projects that were started under the FNM, the road, the airport. A lot of those are coming to an end now. Job creation was a huge campaign promise for the PLP ahead of the 2012 general election. Remember this ad? There is a problem with unemployment. You're looking for a job but can't find one. You have a government that doesn't listen. That doesn't listen. Because of a colossal failure to lead. But we hear you. We hear you. We hear you. We listen to the concerns of the citizens. It's time for a tough new plan. That is the social agenda of the PLP. It moves persons from poverty into the middle class and to the upper class to create jobs. Jobs for Bahamians. Then at the North Eleuthera rally on the night of April 19, 2012, PLP Deputy Leader Philip Brave Davis declared that a PLP government would create 10,000 immediate new jobs for young Bahamians. Following the general election, Davis said those 10,000 jobs would be created within the PLP's first year in office. Well, it's been one year and five months and still no 10,000 new jobs. When you're in the, in the political arena, a lot of what you say is complete garbage. And I think there's no way that he had any justification for saying what he said. And it has turned out to be complete garbage. Um, but the vast majority of Bahamians are intelligent and the vast majority of Bahamians understand that that's just political rhetoric. And if you're stupid enough to believe it in the, uh, in, 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 in the political cycle, then I don't feel sorry for you. Reporting for NB12, I'm Bonnie Toot. Well, Prime Minister Perry Christie and opposition leader Loretta Butler-Turner going head to head and throwing personal attacks at each other during last night's House of Assembly sitting, with the PM commenting on Butler-Turner's size and Butler-Turner apparently questioning the Prime Minister's sexuality. The heated exchange took place as Mike Hall, Member of Parliament, V. Alfred Gray, made his contribution to debate on the Airport Authority Act. After an exchange of words while sitting, the Prime Minister stood to his feet, making comments about the Montague member's size. Maybe the member feels that she can intimidate me by might, by might, or by size. I simply want to be able to say this. On my feet, that didn't sit well with Butler Turner, who has before been the brunt of jokes by her fellow House parliamentarians on the Progressive Liberal Party side. She chastised the Prime Minister, saying everyone in the House is of all different colors, different sizes, and different genders. And to have the Prime Minister of the country, of, the, of this country, stand for the second time that he's done this and talk about might or size, let me tell you, it is no question that you're a big man. I'm a big woman, and there's other big people in this place. I take exception to that. 
because I could find all kind of fault with those people on that side, whether they ugly or whether they ain't ugly. And so they're here talking about my side, that should be off the table. That should not even be up for debate. And I suggest that that is be taken back because I'm not ashamed of who I am. When Milo Butler was leading the charge for the PLT, ain't nobody had a problem with his side. Ain't nobody had a problem with his side. But because I'm on this side, you got a problem with it? Well, you face it. This is my size. I'm a woman and I'm proud of who I am. The row continued with the Prime Minister making mention of Butler Turner's infamous incident when she slapped Fort Charlotte MP Andre Rollins in the pressings of the House. With a quick retort, Butler Turner suggested that Christie has a problem with women. But as for my personal be, um, being offended by the Prime Minister, I don't need an apology from him. He clearly demonstrates that he has a dislike for me, my size, and maybe women. Thank you very much. Well, let's Member for uh, um, um, I figure, I figure, you see, when, when, when someone could slap a member of parliament in this house. Yes. No, listen, when... Christie shot back saying he wished he could challenge the opposition deputy leader in the old gladiatorial fashion and that his family would be amused at the question of his sexuality suggested by Butler Turner. And they would know, they would know better because we, we have met in the forum of activities before. <laughs> and my wife, yes, my wife, my wife knows. My wife knows. My wife, see, she knows. See, she knows what I was when she met me. <laughs> I? No, a man of distinguished reputation in the field of valor. While Christie was responding to Butler Turner, she continued firing remarks at him, prompting him to say, she has come as near as she can possibly to questioning my manhood. This isn't the first time the Prime Minister has defended his sexuality. While voting in the advanced poll prior to the May 2012 general election, the Prime Minister made a retort to those who called him sissy to his wife's face. Anyone who knows me would know I know sissy. Okay. At the end of the melee, Christie withdrew his comments regarding Butler Turner's size.